Greetings chess players and welcome back to the Daily Chess Musings free online summer chess camp June edition. I am really excited about today's uh, special guest. Um, joining me right now is Grandmaster Mackenzie Molnar. Welcome to the show Grandmaster. Yeah, thanks for having me. Looking forward to uh, doing the lesson and cool. uh, going over some chess today. Um, before we get going, um, uh, for you know, a lot of a lot of my uh, uh, students in this camp are from uh, um, Northern California and maybe uh, don't know who you are, um, even though you're you know a, a grandmaster. So they so they should. Um, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell us a little about yourself? Sure, thanks. So I'm a grandmaster. I live in the northern New Jersey area. I know um, New Jersey is a smaller smaller state, of course, than California, but the, the northern part, at least, uh, is very close to uh, New York. It's a pretty big, big chess area, but uh, yeah, I've been playing chess uh, about 25 years. I made the grandmaster title about, uh, it's funny thinking back on it, but I guess about 10 years ago, so I feel it feels long. Like I, I couldn't. I'm surprised to to say it's been 10 years, but uh, yeah, I, I don't. I'm not as much of an active player anymore. I'm more focused on teaching these days, and I host my own uh, chess academy here in New Jersey, where we do um, school programs, uh, online classes, also of different ability levels, uh, private lessons, things like that. So yeah, it's it's. I'm I feel really lucky to make make chess my uh, my my career and. Um, yeah, excited to, to share that uh, knowledge with you guys. Awesome. And uh, what what is uh, what's the name of your academy? It's called uh, Grandmaster Mac. So you can you can. It's a little bit like the Grandmaster Flash for, in case uh, any of you guys are a little too young to to know that reference. But yeah, it's just Grandmaster Mac, and you can find it at GrandmasterMac.com. I have. Um, some information there in case anyone's interested in doing some classes or so grand like master so spelled out mac mac yep. dot yep. com and yeah, uh, of right. course uh, um, yeah. I will uh, put that link in the uh, video uh, recap as well on uh, daily chess museums so uh, when uh, everybody who's watching this goes back to uh, watch it again and I know you'll want to um, you'll uh, you'll be able to uh, click click that link as well. Um, so what what do you have for us today, Grandmaster Mac? So I have one of my favorite games. I'm definitely looking forward to showing this one to you guys. I also made a video about it on Chess.com. So I I believe it's been a while, but in case uh, you're interested, you can also find a little bit more there. But there's a uh, a big theme throughout this game, and it's, it's, it's a really unique game. It's played between uh, Gregory Serper, who's a grandmaster, and um, I think a Greek chess player named Nicolaitis, and I think he's an international master, so it's a GM versus IM uh, game from the early 90s, but it's a really unique game. White ends up sacrificing every single one of their starting pieces, so I've never seen a game like this in any other, like not even close. Just a really, really cool, exciting game. It shows a lot of nice attacking ideas and how to play with the initiative, which is something I hope to to share with everyone. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let me adjust the uh, windows. For some reason, uh, your uh, um, head keeps popping around in OBS. Let me uh, <laughs> make this a little better for everybody, and then we'll get started. All right. Good enough. All right. Cool. Okay, let's get started. Um, so, who, who are the players? Yes, Gregory Serper, is, he's playing white. I think he's actually relocated to New York, or, or I, th I believe. I, I think I actually played him when I was in college at the, at the Marshall Chess Club. So, I got first-hand experience with him. And actually, I, I, I do remember the game. It was, it was pretty entertaining. It was a game 30, and I, I was one move away from mate, and I flagged. <laughs> So oh, you're using man. those old clocks where you, you yeah <laughs> yeah I, I I I wasn't I was not a titled player or anything at that point so uh, he had no material left at the, so it's just a king like one move for me but uh, 
ran out of time. So that was entertaining. But uh, anyway, he's he's playing the white pieces in this game, and an IM named Nicolaitis is playing the black pieces. Okay, let's take a look. So um, yep. one C4 and uh, yep. G6. Then uh... yeah. So, so the. So G6 is actually a move that I, I play in some of my games too. This I think is more common for people who play the Grunfeld because there's a little more flexibility than than playing Knight F6 on move 1. Um, Super plays 2 E4 and the game's quickly going to transpose into a King's Indian here. So black plays Bishop G7, white goes D4, and yeah, the white's got the big center to begin with. D6, knight C3, then knight F6. All right, so this is probably the first interesting moment. If for anyone who who plays the king is Indian for either color, this position I'm sure looks very familiar. White has a lot of choices here. There's moves like F3, which is the same-ish variation. There's Knight f3, which leads into potentially very theoretical lines. Um, and even after knight f3, there's many choices for white. There's like h3 early on, bishop e2. I, I could just keep going on and on with the different variations here. But uh, actually, so on move 5, white chooses knight e2. And this is a little bit more uncommon. So typically the knight. Well, it doesn't usually go to e2 here. It's it's heading towards g3, where it's a little bit more controlled by that pawn on g6. So it's it's kind of un, uncommon to do this. Uh, but let's see how the game goes. It, it becomes much more interesting uh, later on in the opening here. So knight e2, knight d7 for black. Uh, white goes knight g3. Black plays c6. So black is choosing... A setup here on the queen side with with c6 probably to help go for ideas like a6 and then b5 trying to at least find some kind of counter strike against the center gaining some activity and counterplay um, most of the time in the in the uh, in the king's indian black is trying to get counterplay in the dark squares so they'll they'll usually strike against the center with something like e5 mm -hmm. but with uh yeah, in this, in this setup, White's, I think, planning to just play d5 instantly as soon as that happens. And it's hard for, <clears throat> for Black to break down White's center at that point. So Black's going for a different approach. So, um, yeah, after c6, White plays bishop e2. A6. Bishop e3. And Black plays h5. So... An interesting, an interesting move here. Definitely aimed at trying to bother this knight on g3. And it's it's a common idea once white's knight ends up on g3 in positions like this. The risk is that the pawn sometimes ends up ends up a little bit overextended on h4. It can be a bit loose. But as you can probably tell, this knight on g3 is really lacking some squares. So. There's, a, there's an interesting kind of plus and minus, positive and negative, about like whether it's worth it or not here. But uh, this knight is, it really, it, it doesn't have a lot of good prospects once it gets attacked. So I, I think it's a fine idea for black. Uh, so white played f3, reinforcing their center. Uh, black played b5. And th there is definitely... Like m many ways, White could have handled this position. the the uh, The attack on the c4 pawn here isn't anything too crucial for White to be worried about. They they could definitely have castled here, and just kept developing. That would have been totally fine. Uh, but they played c5 instead. Uh, so after c5, Black captured, White took, and then. Black play queen c7. So I'm trying to get through this this opening here a little bit more quickly, and then there's going to be a lot more interesting positions that pop up uh, in the middle game. But 
the struggle here is is that basically black, black is trying to like really firmly control these dark squares. So you can see with the white's pawn chain on the light squares here uh, towards e4 that there's not a lot of protection on this the, the f4 and d4 squares at, at least from 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 white's pawns. Uh, White's dark square bishop is going to be especially important, making sure that it controls those squares. <clears throat> so a after the the move queen c7, black has some some ideas of playing things like uh, h4 soon, and then and then knight h5, wow. trying to get get a, a good grip <clears throat> on these dark squares, and then and then it starts to all kind of come together. What black is is attempting to do here, black might even play something like e5 later on, and then knight f8 to e6. I'm sure it looks probably like a lot of arrows that you're seeing here, but basically black just wants to really hunker and if white doesn't manage to disrupt this plan, then black will have very good squares for the pieces here. Um, so white castles, but the, the emphasis is, is basically on white trying to do something quickly to disturb what black is doing. Um, black plays h4, continuing with the plan. <laughs> And now, now the knight's going to be... Uh, the knight yeah. only has one square, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not not the knight's dream square. If knight, knights on the so rim yeah, are grim, knights in the corner. <laughs> my goodness. Yeah, Yeah, we need a new saying. It doesn't happen a lot, but... Yeah, it's uh, not, not the brightest square on the board for the knight. It actually, it's heading back towards towards f2 and then it's 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 not going to be bad forever but definitely for now not uh, not a pretty piece uh so after knight h1 black plays knight h5 and definitely trying to use that f4 square here also opening up this this g7 bishop which is i think for King, king's indian players and, and grunfeld players dragon players anyone who likes that dark dark square queen kettle bishop this is the pride and joy of the position usually, so getting that piece ready ready for some action. White had a few good choices here. It it would it would make sense to play the move f4, which didn't happen in the game, but we we could quickly sure. Put on Let, the let's there. Uh, let's look at uh, um, what happens. So uh, if White plays f4 now, what 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 are you uh, what are you seeing? I think f4 probably would have made a little bit more sense. I don't really have uh, any specific ideas in mind here for for black, but with the pawn on f4, it makes it more difficult for black to accomplish a couple of their plans. For instance, knight f8 in towards e6 will be harder to play because white can meet it with f5 at some point, mm -hmm. potentially. Also, if black wants to castle at any point, it's more uncomfortable because their knight is loose on h5. Yep. So, also f4 immediately takes control of the e5 square, so black has a hard time putting their pieces there. So I think the most accurate way white could have stopped what black was up to, but um, at least the, the move in the game leads to some very uh, exciting positions coming up. So we can, we can go back quickly to uh, queen d2, but uh, yeah, so after queen d2, black played the move e5. Uh, good move. And, yeah, here, yeah, black, black's trying to set up their knights on the dark squares in the center. So if they get enough time, what they want to play would be knight f4 uh, with, like, and or maybe knight f8 to e6. And if they manage to just plant their knights on these dark squares in the center, they're going to have tremendous pieces, probably in a, a, a decent advantage here because they'll really clog up white, what white's wanting to do. Their knights will be very active, and yeah, white's pieces don't really have much to. So to the do at that uh, point. the um, get gaining the two active knights uh, with you know as you were just describing. Um, is worth uh, sacrificing some scope on the uh, fianchettoed bishop. Yeah, good, good comment there. Yeah, it's a bit of a trade-off, but I think it's worth it here because 
the knights will just be so so strong and the, the bishop is nice on, on g7 but it's like black needs some some room to maneuver their pieces also otherwise they're like their knight on d7 needs needs somewhere to go and if, if it goes to e5 or f6 it's going to be blocking the bishop mm -hmm. anyway they, they need to start untangling their pieces so and also the bishop at least for also now the it's, bishop on c8 right um this this opens up yeah. a, a, a a little bit for that that bishop yeah definitely definitely I think I think it uh it makes sense although yeah I guess there's not a lot the bishop can do at this point at least on the diagonal there's no like weak targets to attack so so e5 makes makes sense for the most part so after e5 white plays rook, uh, sorry knight f knight f2 yeah getting that knight out of and the then, corner uh, yeah it doesn't need too much explanation but I think this is where black goes wrong, and a key a key moment in the game, and one of the places I wanted to focus on the most, to teach lessons on the initiative because after after the move played, white white really has to be precise with with what they're doing in order to cause problems to black, and I get a lot of questions like. When when you know that you should be playing with the initiative, or like we we could start also with what the initiative is, but um, I think a, a common question is like when when are you able to play with it? Um, but actually, I'll I'll start with what it is. So uh, when you're when you're playing with the initiative, usually you're able to play um, kind of threatening moves that keep your opponent on the defensive. You force them into a, a reaction, so they're not able to continue the plans they want. It's it's a bit like like attacking. But it doesn't have to be focused on the king. It's more just the ongoing threats that keep disturbing your opponent's ideas. So it's it's like you kind of get some momentum going in your position. And a lot of people ask, like, how do you know when when it's time to to be like really working towards creating some some constant threats? And I think a good way to to tell is if you have a, a lead in development, because a lead in development is. It's unlike other advantages, like let's say you have a, a space advantage or material advantage or pawn structure advantage. Those those advantages are always long lasting and it you you have to make a deliberate change in the position to to have have it um well you know, you have to like you're the cause of something like that changing. So a lead in development you have to be prepared to use it right away and that's that's kind of um, the emphasis emphasis here. So after black plays knight f8, yeah, let me put that move on the board at least. So yeah, black plays knight f8 here, which is a very slow move, but if black has just two moves here to play something like knight e6 and then bring the other knight to f4, black's position will be exactly what they wanted. Black will have been able to um, do this kind of long, fancy knight maneuver before castling, saving them some time. So if, if white wants to punish this and uh, do it before black manages to get their ideal setup, they, they have to do it right now. So this is where you can kind of tell there's this conflict between like this long-term plan and white's advantages of, of development right now. So white needs to do, do something very direct and aggressive immediately. So the question is like, how do they, how do they do that here? And white starts by softening up the queen's side. So he plays a4 trying to uh, lo loosen things up a bit. So black definitely, at least for now, can't play uh, knight e6. So if you play knight e6, white will take on b5. Black can't even capture back, really, because of the, the pin on the mm -hmm. a file. Yeah, so c takes, and then knight takes or bishop takes. They're both strong, but uh, knight takes looks pretty, pretty juicy. Attacking the queen, heading towards the d6 square with check. Already up upon. This would be totally uh, un unacceptable for Black. So if we go back um, after a4, Black doesn't have too much choice. Um, they they end up going with b4 in the game. I'll also uh, point out that if if pawn takes, this this is also a really nice position for White. Black is splitting up their pawn structure, so they have 
bunch of isolated pawns on the queen side. Uh, white can capture back with a knight, improve that piece, bring it towards b6 where it's going to be on a great square. The rook and bishop will be eyeing that a6 pawn, so black's got, black will have a lot of weaknesses here and just a very bad position. All right, so black played b4. And I mentioned it at the beginning, but this game is very unique because it sacrifices every single one of their starting pieces. And here is where it all begins. So he plays the move wow. back five here. Yeah, this is... Yeah, I love I love seeing the, the upcoming continuations here. It's, it's really great, but since since um, white focus on creating some type of threats and problems for black, a move like knight a two. If we were to go back a move and after after let's say black playing b four, uh -huh. yeah, this this really wouldn't re cut it in a position. Black would play a five, yep. protect the pawn, and sure white white could play something like rook d one or just kind of develop. In, in like a standard fashion, but after black plays knight e6, you know, like white white doesn't really have anything going for their position here. It's just, black will get their knights finally to where they wanted, castle, and just have a pleasant uh -huh. position. So the move knight d5 in the game is uh, pretty brave, but makes a lot of sense because that it really needs black white needs to create problems for black immediately. So black takes, there's just no no choice there at all. They can't afford to let the knight sit there. White takes back with a pawn. So at this point, white only has one pawn in, uh, for the piece that they invested. But these pawns on c5 and d5, very powerful looking. And they have a lot of targets that, that are in their way. So if they, you know, there's going to be some momentum uh -huh. when they, once, they, once they get going, like a, like a snowball just building up as it goes. I, I, I'm actually pretty glad I wasn't in black shoes here. This would have been a hard, hard decision, hard position to play. At this point, it's probably best if black were to play knight e6 and, and just give back some wow. material. And just, yeah, do their absolute best to get castled and yeah. just get the king out of the center as fast as possible. But it's easy to say this once you see the game. And it's just a complicated position mm -hmm. here. It's certainly not, a, not an easy decision to make at all. And in order to make the most of white's position, they they really had to play creatively. So the the move playing the game was was more combative from Black. They played f five. So it's a bit of like fighting fire with uh -huh. fire here because after f five, Black threatens f four, trapping the bishop. Mm. Also, maybe. Trying to use the, uh, the f7 square, I, I suppose. It could be uh, probably an unlikely place that black wants to move their king, but at least it could wiggle its way out of the center if, if necessary. But, yeah, one of the ideas of playing with the initiative is that you don't really want to be... Like, time is, is pretty much the key. So you don't want to be playing defensive moves. So for white here, sure, I'm you know, f4 is a threat from black. White is concerned with that, but the priority is to make White's attack work and their initiative keep going, because they've already invested some material, they, they're they committed to this attack, and they, they really need to to make it work somehow. So he he looks for some offensive moves here. He plays d6. So that, that so snowball I'm, gets rolling. Yep. Yeah. You were talking about so they, the, those targets that were downhill from those pawns. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I like I like the downhill um, aspect of it. That's kind of exactly how it feels. And for black, they they just have to keep putting things in the way of these these pawns that are coming up. They try queen c6 to kind of slow the pawns down. Uh -huh. They black still has the threat of f4, so it might it might look like they have things under control. And, you know, the pawns aren't going anywhere at the moment. They have this threat. And also now after d6, black even has the square e6 again, so maybe they're thinking, you know, all they need is a couple moves here, like either knight e6 or f4. After knight e6, they can castle. If black manages to castle, it's not clear whether white really should have sacrificed the, the piece or not then. Mm -hmm. So It's it's very, again, very is, good that black has a pawn on e6, right? 
because they, <laughs> they they move Absolutely. they move their queen up and onto that uh, same same diagonal as their king. Um, lot, lines are opening up, but that's that's a dangerous uh, dangerous diagonal to place the queen. Yeah, definitely. It's funny you say that they're they're very for well, you know, they're they're glad to have the pawn a six, but from White's perspective, they they don't care. He goes bishop e five anyway. Wow. So, yeah. My... Actually, especially when you're attacking, atta- sorry, yeah, yeah when, you're, when you're attacking, the, one of the key ideas is just creating as many open lines, whether it's diagonals, files, get your give your pieces the chance to get into your opponent's position so that they can make strong threats. That's what White's doing here. He's going to crack open the A file. Uh, yeah, but I think you're going to say something. Uh, no, I, I'm just I'm just uh, very very uh, in awe of the. Uh... The, the swashbuckling approach that uh, White, White is taking here, uh, yeah, and um, it's 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 a rare pleasure to see a uh, you know a, a, a strong player like uh, Grigory Serper um, kind of a, attacking in this uh, you know um, Paul Morphy style, right? <laughs> I mean, it's uh, yeah, definitely. It's it's, it's really really a, a rare treat. Absolutely. Especially if you compare it to some of the games you see in modern chess, mm-hmm. where you get so many like really careful opening choices, and yeah, just like throwing all your pieces at your opponent, it's the good stuff. So black takes, white captures back. At this point, white sacrificed their knight for a pawn on d5. Now their bishop for a pawn. Just keeping keeping the scoreboard going here, because at the end, white will have sacrificed mm-hmm. everything. But uh, after a pawn takes b5, the yeah the queen the queen's got a tough task. It's either got to protect the rook on a8, but you know it would like to slow down the pawns a bit more too. It, so in the game, black took on b5, but they could also try queen b7. So we could we could put that move sure. on the on the board. Let's let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, what, what do you uh, see if uh, yeah. queen b7 would have been played? So the pawns are going to keep mm-hmm. rushing down downhill here. So pawn yep. c6. And yeah, these pawns are very threatening. If black wants to keep keep uh, keep true to this holding on to the material approach, they they need to play queen queen b8 here. Um, could, is is there potential for you know like a um, letting them take the queen and uh, uh, black gets uh, both rooks, so like rook takes a one. Yeah, sure. Let's look at that. That's probably the best defense because at some point here, black just can't keep retreating with all of their pieces, and at least eliminating some of white's force would be probably worthwhile here. So after rook a one, black. Uh, Excuse me. White will take on uh, mm-hmm. b7. White, uh, black should take on. Because it's a check, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then king, king has yeah, to yeah. take, and then bishop takes uh, b7. Yeah, we have this really weird material imbalance here. I, I like, uh, I mean, um, Black, wh- White's position better because, you know, the uh, the queen is already actively placed, whereas you look at uh, um, Black's pieces, and they're, other than the uh, bishop on b7, the other pieces are a little disorganized, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head here. If you look at, like, the, the, the knight on f8, I, all of all of white uh, black's king side pieces, they're they're kind of doing nothing mm-hmm. at this point. The knight on h5, rook on h8, and over the next few moves, black white white could place things like I would I would I would imagine your knight d3 is probably a pretty good. Yeah. Move. And then and then you know you improve the knight, bring it closer to c5 or taking on b b4. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, yeah. The, here, this wouldn't be. It's it's not a. It it was a possibility, um, but it, but it's not not a good one. <laughs> not yeah. a good one. When, the, the, the trouble yeah. is, go ahead. I, I I was just saying, not a good one under uh, closer inspection. It, it was it was something you know. You you look at these, uh, especially you know when when you're doing uh, analysis, it's it's good to uh, 
to look at these things. Um, but yeah, at, on closer inspection, uh, it's not so clever after all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there's no easy choices here, so it's, it's definitely worth looking at. And it's actually you know a pretty common defensive idea. Is if you might be ahead of material and in order to, to survive, you can just sacrifice some back, get rid of your opponent's attackers, keep a little bit of extra material and, and hope, hope to de defend and then win with it in the end. But yeah, not, uh, not, not quite going to work for Black Peter. Okay, so back uh, so, to, uh, I think we were on um, yeah. 21. Uh, queen we, takes b5 is what Black actually played. Yeah, yeah. So they, they tried queen, b5, queen b5 in the game. Mm -hmm. white, white takes on a8. Black plays queen c6, defending the bishop on c8, also attacking a a8. Mm -hmm. Black still has that threat of f4 looming. White white hasn't. Yeah, good with point. It yet, but... We yeah we got so sidetracked with the stuff on the queen side. F4 is still there, waiting to happen. Yep. But he so... doesn't have the initiative, right? And that that's what you're uh, that's what you're showing us. White white keeps. Yeah. Creating attacks. Exactly. So White's not too concerned with F4. They would much rather uh, keep the momentum going with their pieces and, and and build up build up the pressure again. So he includes this rook on F1, which is doing nothing right now. He plays rook rook F A1. Wow, so he's he's just gonna allow F four if black if black wants to play it. Losing, yep. uh, losing another debate. piece. All right, F four is played. Yep. So the pieces are gone mm -hmm. at this at this point. And white white plays rook a seven. So he brings the rook up from a one. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So there is there's some strong threats already. Mm -hmm. I would I guess I would say. Oh man, actually, uh, I just noticed this, but if you were to give White a free move here, could you could you guess what they're trying to play? If if we give I mean, if we give White a free move, um, so if it was White to move here, ladies and gentlemen who are watching in the uh, chat, do you guys have an idea of what White might play if if they had one free move? There are so many. So many tasty threats on the board. Which, uh, which is the move? Um, we've got uh, uh, one person, uh, 2012 S1, suggesting rook takes c8. Okay, rook takes c8. And then we've got uh, Shriyansh101 saying rook c7. Rook c7 looks like a normal move, although after rook c7 you have to watch out. The rook on a8 will be unguarded. Uh -huh. And then uh, uh, Master Elvin says uh, d7. Um, so why, why don't we look at these uh, in order? Um, what, what do you see after rook takes sure. c8? Let's go ahead and look at uh, some of these suggestions. Let, let's, let's say black. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to put the move b3 uh -huh. on the board, which of course is not a good move for black, but let's say. Oh, actually, b3 is a terrible move because that actually allows a force mate. Never mind. Let me try something a little bit less less bad. Uh, try not to change the position too much here. Something like. All right, g5 is an ugly move, but let's do it. Uh, I think you said rook c8 was was the first idea, right? Yeah. So we have uh, we yeah rook c8, and then we got um, uh, also uh, let's see. Did we? No, that looks like yeah. So we've got uh, rook c8, rook c7, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, d7 are our three suggestions. So let's look at rook, sure. rook takes c8, which is okay, a check. So, uh, yeah, definitely would would fit along with this this idea of playing with tempo and with quick quick attacking moves. It would work pretty well here. If, if white had a free turn, black would take back. With their queen, obviously. And then uh, maybe rook e7 check? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good, good idea. King d8. 
And then the Black King has to go to d8. Yeah, this is nice. It keeps the king, definitely from going to the king side, and keeps it in this like zone where you're going to you're going to finish it off. And then uh, 2012 S1 is suggesting um, after king d8, uh, he, he's the one I believe. Yeah, he's the one who uh, um, suggested uh, the uh, the rook takes uh, the bishop move in the first place. He's suggesting uh, queen d5, which is a very very d5 is active active square for the queen. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So that the idea that looks like a pretty good, uh, pretty good line, huh, uh, Grandmaster Mac? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, it's very strong. The, you can even um, improve it slightly with, with Queen takes B4 instead of uh, Queen D5. Oh, there. wow! Yeah, the idea of bringing the Queen into the attack is definitely correct. Uh -huh. it's certainly gonna be nice here. And it's it's funny you don't really care about the pawn. You much prefer to just set up one of these checks on either B6 or A5, which Black, I, I really can't see a good defense to, to either of those checks. So this this is a very good idea. Rook C8 would be... Interesting. Yeah, now, nice, what was nice the uh, second suggestion? Let me uh, go back in the chat real fast. So uh, Rook C7 was yeah. the second yeah. suggestion from uh, Shriyansh. Sure, so let's, let's look at that real fast. Yeah, let's check. Sure. So Rook uh -huh. C7. White's position is so good that even after Rook C7 here, they're still completely winning. But black can take on a8, so uh, you have to be prepared to give up yeah. the rook, which definitely needs to be careful about. And then uh, I guess the idea then is, what, what what would white do next if rook c7, queen takes a8? Um, yeah, you'd have to go back to this rook e7 idea yeah. again. So it's it's kind of like the other the other idea, but it, but you're uh, uh, starting starting down down a rook. Um, yep. And let's let's. Uh, what is uh, I, I'm reading some of the chat. We've got a lot of excitement in the room. You brought us a, a really interesting game, that uh, I'm sure, is new for all of us. Um, and. Uh, I love it. It's this is a uh, you know um, there are so many you know hidden treasures in uh, chess databases. These are the, you know the types of games I, I look for, and um, hmm, my uh, I'm not able to scroll back up in the chat for some reason right now. That's interesting, um, but that's okay. That's okay. Our uh, third um, our third option was uh, just d7 check. What do you think about that? That one I would be a little bit less enthusiastic about. The, I think the trouble here is that black will take back with our knight. And I think this is a dream, like too good of a dream, well, a dream that's too good to come true. But black would love to castle. Probably a long mm -hmm. time ago they, they thought this would never happen in this game. Yeah. But hey, they're pretty close here. Yeah. D don't want to let them off the hook. Very, so, very true. So it's, it's an attacking move, but they can respond to it. It's a threatening move, but they can respond with yeah. the knight that's blocking their, their path to castling. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, if, I, if I could just have one, one more sure. moment. So after, after g5, another interesting move, which is just really, really nice to look at, is queen d5. That was, I was hoping somebody might mention it. It's just a very beautiful move. So after g5, queen d5, this is one of the ideas that's wow. very powerful. Wow. Yeah, threatening to just give the queen up, but it's a deflection. Yeah, you want to drive away the queen from this shot. Yeah, and and nobody, uh, nobody, I didn't, I didn't see that one. Um, it was not uh, suggested. That is very pretty. It's removing the guard, right? And then you you just get that standard uh, back rank mate with the uh, with the two rooks. Yeah, that that you know um, this these tactical positions have so much fun stuff. Um, and uh, you know you brought up you brought up an interesting um, interesting uh, strategy. Sometimes when you're attacking, or or just sometimes in general, it's it's useful to ask yourself, what would I do if it was my move right now, or if I had two moves? Sometimes that uh, type of question um, helps you discover a move like uh, Queen D5. So very, very good. That that's that was a really neat one. 
Um, okay. Yeah, glad you like yeah. it. I, I'm also, I really like that you said that at the end about asking, like, what could you do if you have a free move? It's really important also to consider, like, what would your opponent do with a free move? Mm-hmm. That's that's when you, I think, really make strides with your chess is when you're able to kind of anticipate your opponent's ideas and then you can combine a little bit of, like, what you want with preventing their ideas too. It's very, very strong. This is, you know, I, I do a lot of My, that kind of esoteric questioning personally um, when it's my opponent's turn. Because, you know, so, some people, uh, unfortunately, just kind of zone out when it's their opponent's turn. Um, but to me, that's, that's a good time to uh, be very creative with your, uh, with your self-dialogue. And then when, when, it's, when it's your own turn, what I like to do is be very, um, very thorough. And, you know, um, mm-hmm. do, you know um, very, very scientific. Look at all the checks, captures, and threats. And, and so on and so forth. But when, when it's my opponent's turn, I like to uh, yeah. be, a, a, you know, a, a, a allow myself to be creative. It's fun. It's a fun use of uh, their time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good points. So, Black did not play G5 in the game. They tried. <laughs> they, did, they, did, they didn't Which give White a free move. Okay. Of course, but yeah. yeah, what a shame. So 97 was played, and here comes White's next sacrifice. Black is Black's about to castle, by the way. So this is this is why it's even when attacking, it's still very viable to anticipate what your opponent's plan is, because it, it may tell you something which your attack needs to do as well. So Black, oh, I'm sorry, White really needs to prevent castling. That's that's a very uh, important idea for Black here. So the next move needs to come with mm-hmm. tempo. So he plays rook c8 with a check. Wow, wow. So again, keeping the initiative and uh, uh, preventing black from castling on this move, even though it's it's going to lose more material. Yep. So there's the rook for our bishop. So black takes. And now we, now we do actually see the queen d5 move on the board. It's not a sacrifice this mm-hmm. time, but very strong. It's still, well, actually, I guess it is a sacrifice because they're, they're giving up the bishop, which, which black accepts. Wow. So, so they take here. And now, now the <laughs> the knight's under attack <laughs> with with the threat of check. Um, yes. But absolutely. But it's it, White's it, move right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. White White has a few good options here. At least black doesn't have the defense of casting available. Mm-hmm. So I, w- I would say this is this is a point where if if white wanted to try to like like, like they they're, they might have more options available here rather than just something that purely makes a threat because at least for now they stop black's idea. So a move like knight d three actually would be would be pretty reasonable. Mm-hmm. Just getting the knight out of harm's way, protecting the c five pawn, and then after that white will. Have a number of threats like queen e6 or c6. Rook a8 is another big threat. And one thing I think is interesting about, about this position is that you can really tell that sometimes the quality of your pieces is, is much more important than the quant- quantity of the pieces. Blacks, rook, bishop, and knight on h5, all these pieces on the king side, they're doing nothing in the position. Yeah, so, it's it's. Even if white has it's less. material versus force. White white's pieces are actually force. Uh, black's pieces are are material. <laughs> they they aren't uh, they aren't yeah. um, actively placed. They aren't uh, threatening things or controlling useful squares. Very good point. Yeah. Well, let's go to the game. So white played queen e six. Another yep. Move. It's a check with a tempo. I, I see a, um, another uh, another um, uh, 2012 S1 was uh, very excited about uh, sacrificing on D7 there with their rook. Um, Interesting. Hmm. Is that just a little little <laughs> too aggressive, maybe? Um, because yeah, I'm starting starting to feel a little bit bad for White's pieces. There is just so little. Yeah, left. and, and, and Black could uh, uh, if if White sacked their rook there, Black could actually just take the knight with check, right? 
and then yeah. respond back. So There's you no you, you got to be careful about that. Remember, they're they're threatening to capture something with check. So White plays a check first. Um, Queen e6 check. Yeah, and of course, as you're playing this type of position, you don't you don't want to just do things kind of automatically. Like it, it's it's a it's a good sign that this moves a check. But it doesn't mean mm -hmm. you have to play it. I'm sure during the game, White calculated some of the variations here, and uh, we'll see that they, they end up working out fine for White. But Black has two choices, but basically just one move. So King d8 walks into mate in one. You can put on mm -hmm. the board, but uh, King d8 just walks straight into yep. seven. Good. So King f8 and is forced. King f8, yeah, pretty much forced. And white white captures on d7 here with the rook. Nice. Yep, black takes this turn to capture on f2 with check. Definitely no reason mm -hmm. not to. Even though there's a threat of checkmate on f7, um, black, uh, white can't do it if black's saying check. So takes the knight with check, and white's just down to a queen and a rook now. Just, just a queen and a rook, two pieces. Yeah, yeah I feel like we're, we're a maybe a little lower on time, but I still want to give people a chance, to, at least maybe to think a little bit here about whether you would take mm -hmm. the pawn with white or would you play king f1? Which which moves better? Um, wow. Okay, so in, in the chat, I'm going to calculate could, as could, well. I'm going to be looking at this as well. But everybody in the chat, the question is, how do you deal? with the check to your king right now. Do you take the pawn on f2 or do you play king f1? And it, um, it's not such an easy one to answer because if you take the pawn on f2, there's queen takes c5 check. And if you play king f1, there's queen a6 check. So there's, there's, there's a, a follow-up check to both moves. Um, so Master Elvin is saying king f1. <coughs> Let's see what other people... We'll, we'll get kind of a, a consensus. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm starting to personally lean toward uh, king, king takes f2. Because I'm I'm a little afraid of inviting the uh, the knight on h5 to uh, get into action with a check, and then a recapture opening that uh, file for uh, Black's rook, the h rook. Um, so uh, let, let's see. Anybody else? Um, yeah, of course we cannot play queen f7, um, Andrew, because we are in check. Right, Andrew? This pawn on f2 is checking the king. We would love to. Um, but, uh, yeah, we can't uh, we, we, we can't do that right now. Um, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think, Grandmaster Mac? So this is a very important choice. Mm -hmm. One of the moves allows black actually force checkmate. One of them keeps white's winning potential alive. Wow. Yeah, your face actually said it all there. So the move that loses actually is king f2. Oh, uh, taking the pawn wow. is I would have lost. Like game changer. Fantastic. Okay, let, let's look at the force checkmate real fast. Um, sure, see? sure. So, yeah, yeah. In, in a situation like this, you have to really calculate it, calculate it out the best you can, and not trust like intuition or anything like that. You just really have to make sure you see everything as precisely as possible. But black takes on c5 with check. Sure. Mm -hmm. Black will play queen c1 check. Oh man, yeah. And then and then there's some really precise moves here, which I'll, I'll try to just get sure. to quickly. So it's king f2. Black will play queen d2 check. This 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 is a useful check. It keeps white's king a little bit more st stuck in in this area, and uh, it prevents king g1 also because. What, uh, black, black, we yeah, so then King but, F1 uh, is forced, and then, and then that, that move that I was afraid of, the initial move that I was so scared of, I'm allowing, and it's even worse now, right, Grandmaster Mac, the Knight G3? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, 
Yep, night shift. Yeah, three. that's why. That's why. I see it now. Yep. And then yeah. HX uh, G3, of course. And then, um, yeah, th th yeah, things are things are really, really bad. Um, so sure. yeah, I would have uh, I would have been toast right there, if if I if I went with my intuition on that one, um, which is why uh, Grandmaster uh, Max says, um, yeah, and obviously, yeah, if if you're sitting in in such a sharp position that the uh, it's it's a game changing moment. Um, you need to be accurate, um, not not guess like I did. You have to be absolutely, absolutely, hundred percent sure you're being accurate. All right. So King F1 is yep. is played. Yeah. So King F1. Uh, of course, it's you know a little different when we're just sitting here and just trying to, you know, we have, we're not as invested in trying mm -hmm. to think it as through. But yeah. Anyway, so King F1, Black plays Queen, queen E8. Protecting its mate, uh, they uh, definitely have to do this. And then here, white sacrifices the next piece, which was another very accurate move. It, it almost looks like white is kind of running out of steam here. And uh, the, there's a tempting move, rookie rookie seven, but rookie seven would allow queen b5 with basically the same checkmate as before. Uh huh. And then, yes, yeah, so you can't play that. The only thing white can can do to keep their attack going is rook f7 wow. giving up the rook so this, this game is amazing it's, it's simply amazing <laughs> and then uh yeah, yeah. Think it's, queen it's like takes f7 there. for sure yeah yep and the entire point of this was to be able to play queen c8 here uh, clearing the back rank for this check so white plays queen mm -hmm. c8 black blocks it and now, White gets to play d7 here. Nice. Earning, earning their self, themselves another another queen. But it's even after that, they're still mm -hmm. down material. It looks like. So it's. Oh, it's amazing! You're right. So e even if even if we were to imagine that uh, you know White White gets their their extra queen, they'll still be down material. Amazing. Yeah, so white, uh, excuse me, black plays uh, king f7 here. White, white captures, uh, uh -huh. promoting to a new queen. Black takes back. And actually now their pieces look a little more blue. Yeah. So it's maybe, maybe during the game black was thinking, hey, this isn't so bad, sort of defended and looks like things are all right. Here white plays a Nice precise, precise check. He plays queen b7, and the the thing here is, like, white white is limited in material, but they have this pass pawn. So whenever the material is pretty limited on the board, pass pawns can 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 go up in value. They they have a even more, like better chance of promoting. So white white is counting on this pawn here to do do some work. After queen b7, uh, after queen b7. White's ready to play ideas like c6, c7, yeah. c8 quickly, and black's pieces on the king side are still having some trouble preventing the pawn advance. Yeah. Uh, so after queen b7, black plays rook e7 here. And then c6. White plays c6. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead, take my queen. So I'll black... get another one. Yeah. <laughs> exactly a third one of the game. A third one, yeah. <laughs> third time's a charm, or whatever they say, but yeah. especially with queens, I would say. Black plays e4 here. Very interesting idea. They're gaining their own counterplay. So one of the ideas behind this move is that they're trying to play e3 and then e2 with their own promotion in, in store for white. So white has to be careful about that. Um, Grandmaster but Mac, let me make a, a quick quick announcement. Um, it looks like our lesson's going to go a little bit over, and uh, you guys have, uh, a bunch of you have a, a, a tournament round that starts at noon. Um, so, um, Grandmaster Mac, um, yeah. I want to uh, give out your website again for everybody to hear. And the, the beauty of what we're doing is, um, this is this is going to be put on YouTube anyways. Um, so everybody who's in the in the chess camp can play their tournament round and then go watch the YouTube video see see how the game finishes 
but why they while they are here um, it's you, you said it was grandmastermac.com yep is your grandmaster mac mac yep, dot com and i'm going to put that link in the uh, in the blog again um, so don't worry you'll see how the game finishes um, yeah i know you'll want to yeah and and everybody i know everybody will want to so um, you you can leave Twitch. That's okay. This will be on the Daily Chess Musings YouTube channel. Um, so feel free. Go. Yeah, the tournament is at noon. So go get yourself ready for that, and uh, um, then uh, go watch the end of this YouTube video. And also make sure you're checking out uh, GrandmasterMac.com. He has uh, lessons up there as well, right? That's right. Yeah. Yep, a so lot, like lot this, of good you lessons, other, and you can find out where you can get. Um, you you teach online too, right, Grandmaster Mac? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, that's where I do most of the teaching these days. Super, uh, super. So, yeah. uh, even if even if you're in Northern California, you can still get lessons from Grandmaster Mac. Um, and uh, yeah, so check out his website. Um, go go give it lots of uh, lots of love check it out and um, then uh, go play your tournament and come back uh, to the YouTube later on and you will see the end this is a very exciting game all right Grandmaster Mac let's go ahead and continue sure I have a feeling it shouldn't take too much longer <laughs> we've seen so many sacrifices there's hardly anything anything left yeah but uh, white, white plates. Oh, I forgot to mention. Mm -hmm. So after e4, black also has a second threat that they want to play here. They want to take on b7, which is maybe less less of the clear threat. So after a take on b7, now bishop e5 is is ready to get played. So that would just stop white's pass pawn completely. Black would be up a bishop and a knight for just a couple pawns, and then they would they would be winning in, in the in the end game here. Mm -hmm. So white has to be mindful of both of those. So he, he plays c7, making sure there's no trade, and then bishop b5. Black plays e3, and black's promotion is scarier than white's promotion. If white if white were to play just like way too impulsively here, and play the move c8, sure it looks nice to have two queens, but after e2 they're getting checkmated once the promotion happens. So you can I, I hope. hope uh, hopefully you've seen on your on your board there, but let's say c8 queen, e2 check, king f2, and then black promotes with, with mate. That'd be a shame, shameful way to yeah, it would. Separate that that would be a disaster B7. after after all. So um, <laughs> you know all all the all all the brilliant moves, and you just you just uh, yeah. you you get a little impulsive, right at the finish line. You're one step away. It's so tempting yeah. to to promote to another queen, and then uh, it's disaster. <clears throat> yeah, that's cool. So yeah, I'm sure I'm sure we've all yeah. been there. But okay, yeah, e3. Uh, White needs to find a defense to this. So what they decide to do is find a way to exchange the queen for the rook, which is going to allow White to safely promote their pawn, since Black won't be. Uh, Defending the e2 square anymore, it'll, it'll be. Uh, they don't need to worry about it. Uh -huh. So, white, white starts with queen d5 check. Sure. Another tempo move. King f6. White plays queen d6. I showed this game to a friend of mine, and he said, "Oh, I, after the next two moves, I'm sure that white's a grandmaster because black plays king f7 uh -huh. here, and instead of capturing the rook right away." He repeats moves, which you know, like only only grandmasters want to do, apparently. <laughs> so he he he, ch <laughs> he checks on on d5. Black plays king, king f6 again, and then after queen d6, they they repeat. Black plays king king f7. Then now only now does white take on e7 with check. King takes, and then c8. So the, usually you're you're repeating in order to reach mm -hmm. time control. I definitely think that's what White was doing. Sure, here, especially when you look I, at it, um, they I'm... were uh, approaching move forty, right? So that yeah, was yeah. that was likely. Um, uh, oftentimes, you have to make the first forty moves in 
a certain amount of time and then you get more time you get your bonus time added um, and uh, uh, 2012 s1 um, I saw your question um, if you go to dailychessmusings.com you can find out all the answers about our club okay um, all right, and uh, so yes, uh, c8 equals queen. And um, how, how many queens is is this now that have been in this game? <laughs> third, 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 yeah, third one. It's, it's, it's amazing. So, but yeah. actually, yeah, when White captured the rook on on e7, that was their original queen. Mm -hmm. So th that that was the one that technically got sacrificed, and finally, every single starting piece White had on the back rank, obviously not the king. Was yeah, that so. you know that is int every single piece White had in the back rank was sacrificed in this game. Is it is that what I heard you say, every Grandmaster Mac? Absolutely. I I've never. Definitely. This is such a rare, rare. Uh, um, this is amazing. This, this this game is absolutely a treasure, and I I've never seen this game. I'm so happy we had you on the show today. This this is just uh, this this yeah. is this is gonna yeah I I, I am just uh, I am I am lacking words even which is very unusual for me <laughs> um, but yeah Th this is this is a, just such a, a unique unique um, game wow history this is chess history right here yeah definitely it's 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 overlooked it, it deserves yeah. more credit. Yeah, so, so finally White promotes again, bishop page 6 And White just needs to make sure they, they, they show some caution here, don't somehow let these pawns on e3 and f2 get a little out of control. So he starts with queen c5, black plays king e8, um, queen b5 check. I guess White's, well, White's got a lot of flexibility here. I guess he's trying a couple of checks to see how black responds, but... After queen b6, this double attacks uh, d8 and also g6. g6 is a very valuable pawn here to win because it anchors black's pieces on the king side. So after king d7, white takes the g6 pawn. And now black's position is kind of falling apart. Black tries e2, which is kind of a desperate move, but desperate time times call for desperate measures. So if you're if you're like really far behind like this, you sure. might as well try some like last trick. See if your opponent gives, you know, like, you know, spaces out for a second. So if White takes on e2, there's knight f4, winning the queen. Wow! Black, so definitely wow! That. So yeah, if if White takes and uh, um, 2012 s1, it is dailychessmusings.com. That is the website. That is my website. Um, that's where you find out about the club. Yeah, that would be a. a, a <laughs> it's it's one last one last uh, ditch effort at a uh, game winning tactic. Um, yep. Cool. So White took with uh, on f two, and then Black tries one more uh, interesting move with Bishop e three, hoping once again to either deflect the king away and allow promotion or lure White into taking mm -hmm. the pawn. But White plays king e one and the fun's over. Yeah. Black resigned. No more yeah. tricks. They they have uh, just one move they can play there and not lose, but it's it's not a it's not a hard one to spot, right? King e one, but you know um, yeah, it, 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 those were some uh, those were some uh, wonderful tricks, right? Right at the end, I didn't even think uh, Black had any tricks left in in his sleeve, and uh, lo and behold, he had uh, uh, two possible game winning tactics. It's okay to play hope chess when you're hopelessly behind. That's the that's the only time to uh, to play hope chess. <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah. that's a good way to put it. Um, Grandmaster Mac, this has been um, such a uh, such a real pleasure for me. I, I just love this game. Um, thank you so much for sharing it with us. I am I am I'm, I'm deeply indebted to you now um, for showing me this game. Now I can now I can go and. Uh, um, spread this game around Northern California. Help it get, as you said, the uh, attention it deserves. Wow! And uh, you said uh, um, uh, Gregory Serper uh, lives in New York now. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen his name 
in Chesterman's late for a while, but yeah, he's in New York. I think you know he's a good, a good, a good yeah. player, of course. And maybe we'll see. Well, we'll see it, a, you know, another, if uh, I, I, I bump sometime. into uh, I bump into uh, you know other chess players often, and I'm sure at some point I will bump into a Grigory Serper, and uh, then I can uh, I can shake his hand and say, just wow. <laughs> That game you you got uh, won over Nicolaitis in uh, what what year was this? This was uh, I think it's ninety three. Yeah, nineteen ninety three yeah. in Saint Petersburg, Russia, not Florida. Saint Petersburg, Russia. Okay, <laughs> Fa fantastic. Um, and again, uh, um, Grandmaster Max uh, website is GrandmasterMac dot com. And uh, I will put a uh, link to that um, underneath the uh, uh, YouTube video that I embed on uh, dailychessmusings.com as well. Grandmaster Mac, anything else you want to uh, want to uh, tell us about? Um, well, no, not so much. I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm hoping that I'll be able to make a chess board course soon. So that might be something interesting to check out. I, I, I really like uh -huh. attacking chess, as you can probably tell by my choice sure. of games here. So I'm thinking it might be on the Evans Gambit. So hopefully I can show some, some of my favorite games that I've been able to wow. play with it. And it's, it's been an opening I really enjoyed. So maybe if, if you know, by the time you someone else might be seeing this, Hopefully the course could be out. Well, we'll have you back um, to promote the course, we're checking too, out. Um, if, 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 if that comes to uh, sure. fruition. Um, I would love to have you back. Um, you can, uh, you know, come back, uh, promote the course. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, um, the, you know, the, uh, a lesson like this um, is, is, so, is so just wonderful because um, th this game has, is under the radar. It should be in. It should be in those collections of... However many best you know chess games ever played you know top 100 chess games or yeah, wh whatever whatever game collections this this should be in and I've never seen it I have a lot of I have a lot of chess books I've never seen this game before and it, it it's 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 a yeah. stunning stunning game thank you so much yeah, I can't imagine how you how you yeah. top this but oh yeah sorry to yeah th off. thank you so much Grandmaster Mac and uh, hey. Everybody on, uh, t oh, oh, Grandmaster Mac, are you, um, now if they go to GrandmasterMac.com, they're going to also see maybe you have a YouTube channel and a, and a Twitch channel, stuff like this? Yeah, I've been, I have a, a bunch of videos on up on YouTube of different types. Some of them have been on openings, and I have a friend who we made a couple of creative, a bunch of creative videos to show some famous games where we, it's like using animation and things like that. So you might enjoy it. It's, it's pretty fun. You cool. can check it out. Uh, I have some friends I, I stream with occasionally. Uh, we, we've covered the Nationals before. Uh, you may even have, have um, like, watched potentially your own game get shown up on there at some point. So that's, we're called the um, New Jersey, or you can find us at passers.gg. We're called the Garden State Passers. It's after a... a uh, a league we played in as the New Jersey team, so that's our name, and you can you can maybe find and us. That there was too, in the so. um, uh, U.S. Chess uh, League um, tournament. It it was in a new one. I think it was, it's the States Cup, which is an online league that formed during during cool. the pandemic to try to bring together all these different states. And yeah, we we had a good time with it last, awesome. last year. Awesome. So yeah, he's he's got lots of videos too. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, go. Uh, Go to uh, GrandmasterMac.com, click on his uh, YouTube video, and then uh, go uh, like subs and subscribe to his uh, his channel. All right, Grandmaster Mac, thank you so much. Uh, we we got to run, um, but uh, it, it was a real pleasure, and I hope to do this again sometime. Bye. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. And well. uh, uh, thank you, everybody. Um, we will see you tomorrow for the. Uh, 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 oh, don't forget Lauren Goodkind at uh, 2 p.m. today. And then I will see you tomorrow for the last day of the June chess camp. Uh, uh, thanks again. Bye.